So we are throwing it back to over a decade ago for today's historic rebuild. And we're going to be rebuilding the 2009-2010 Golden State Warriors, a team that went 26 and 56. So what's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Yeah, this team was not good by any means, but they did have a young Steph Curry still. They had a 24-year-old Monte Ellis also. They had Steven Jackson, Corey Maggette, Anthony Randolph, Ronnie Terrier, CJ Watson, Anthony Morrow, Andres Biedrins, Kalina Azubuki. So they ended up moving Randolph, Turioff, and Azabuki later on for David Lee, one of the worst trades ever for the Knicks. Don't get me started on that one. That trade ended up happening in the 2010 offseason, so maybe we'll try to replicate that. But yeah, I don't plan on this team being great. In the 2010 draft, they ended up getting the sixth overall pick, but they drafted a bust in Epe Udo. So we're going to see if we can maybe have a different course of action with this team. We're going to keep developing young Steph, and we're going to see if Monte Ellis and him can really just run the show for this team. Andre Biedrins were supposed to be pretty good. He was the 11th overall pick in the two. 2004 draft, which is crazy because he's 23 here. And I was like, wait, 2004, this is the 2010 season. Well, he was 18 when he was drafted out of Latvia. So do we have a correct coach with this roster? Let's go. Don Nelson is the head coach. It's literally the top and most downloaded 2010 roster on Xbox Series X. Literally, if you go to user created roster, it's on the main page. So I'm okay if this team doesn't do great as we was by 37 in opening night or on opening night this is the 2010 draft class so we don't really need a john wall because i have curry and ellis right now so paul george would be a sick pickup demarcus cousins gordon hayward and then the 2011 draft we know they ended up with clay thompson 2012 they ended up with harrison barnes and draymond green and the rest is history so yeah we ended up losing by 37 to start off the year monte ellis had 25 points let's just see how game two goes against the denver nuggets oof end up losing by nine. What about game three? There we go. We finally get a win. Steven Jackson had 23 points. Him being 31 years old could make him a potential deadline move guy. Corey McGetty's 29 years old as well. Because if we take a look at the salary cap breakdown, all right, CJ Watson, Anthony Morrow, they could be moved. But currently we do have Jackson under contract next year. So we could also move him in the off season. Andres Biedrins is under contract. Corey McGetty, Ellis is under contract as well. So we'll see where we are at the deadline. If I want to be a seller, if I want to be a buyer, do I just want to stay put this is an interesting deal whoa uh, i can get brooke lopez who would actually be pretty nice for our future he's only 21 years old i don't really want to trade any picks yet i don't even know if i want to move monte ellis because i wonder if he could just be the backcourt guy with Steph for the future we'll see we're three and seven to start off the year so not off to a great start now this is an interesting offer from the clippers stephen jackson who's 31 years old like i said having a solid year for us nothing crazy i can get the clippers 2011 first round pick or excuse me no this would be 2010 first rounder and i get deandre jordan who's only 21 years old could give us some center depth he's under contract for at least the next two seasons at one million dollars that is an interesting offer i don't know if i'm gonna get a better one this clippers team ended up getting eric bledsoe in this draft i don't know if they're gonna make the playoffs so you know what i'm gonna do that we're gonna make an in-division trade inter-pacific division trade and we're gonna pick up ronnie terry or <laughs> ronnie terry off deandre jordan getting my centers mixed up so yeah we are gonna have deandre jordan start for us at the five we do have a lot of bigs with terry off and beadrins right now but hey we get a young center that ended up making um all stars later in his career was part of the lob city clips and we get a first round pick for stephen jackson who's 31 years old he could have possibly even regressed this offseason whoa and anthony morrow now he's a sharp shooter he's a great shooter for us but he's an expiring contract the lakers who are good would offer me luke walton who i'm like torn on because he's getting paid for the next four years and he's not very good but I can get the Lakers first round pick in 2012. Do you have anybody else other than Luke Walton you would give me? Like, I would take Josh Powell, honestly, if I can get a first round pick. Could I maybe even steal two first round picks for Anthony Morrow, given how good of a shooter he is? And the Lakers would want Miki Moore, and I get Adam Morrison, who's on a one year deal. Let's do that. So we have just added draft capital. We're 10 games, or excuse me, 11 games under 500. I just added a Lakers first round pick in 2012 and 2014. We already have the Clippers pick. So yeah, we're making another in division trade. We might be soft tanking at the moment. Just don't tell anybody. All right, so the Celtics are offering us a first round pick in 2011 and Glenn Davis, who's not a bad big, and he's not on a terrible contract for Anthony Randolph in my second this year. I'm going to decline that. I don't think I want to move my second since it should be between picks 30 and 35. So we're about to be at the all-star draft. We'll see if we have any Warriors. You got Team LeBron and Team Kobe, which is pretty cool to see. Team Kobe's Dwayne Wade, Howard Garnett, Gasol. Oh, dude, this was just like my favorite time as an NBA fan. I mean, I was 10 years old. I was a Knicks fan. The Knicks weren't very good, but it, there was just so much fun talent in the league, man. I'm like, these guys were just the epitome of just basketball at the time. We don't have any all-stars this year, which is fine. We are 13 games under 500 at 
that honestly thought we'd be a lot worse. And I'm getting plenty of offers for Monte Ellis right now, but I don't want to trade him since he's 25 years old and I have him under contract for at least the next few seasons. So uh, we are here at the trade deadline. We are 13 games under 500. Taking a look at the player stats, Monte Ellis is our leading scorer. There's Steph. Now they are both 6'3", and we'll see if Ellis could end up being a good perimeter defender. Corey Maggette, 30 years old. He is under contract though for the next three seasons after this year. So I'll see what I can get for him on the trade finder or at least on the trade block, but I don't know if I'm gonna definitely gonna move him. DeAndre Jordan's been very solid for us. That was a great trade. The bench is nothing crazy. I'll see if I can maybe move CJ Watson because he's a free agent at the end of the year as well. All right, I'm gonna do this trade with the Trailblazers. I'm gonna be giving them Corey Maggette and CJ Watson. I'm getting Rudy Fernandez in this trade, who's a good sharpshooter as well. And I'd get him under contract for less than $2 million over the next three years. And I get Nicholas Batum as well, who's actually a solid playmaker for us. And he could be our starting small forward for the remainder of the year. And he's on a bargain of a deal as well. So let's do this trade. And the rotation is going to be Curry, Ellis, Batum, Anthony Randolph, DeAndre Jordan with Andres Biedrins, Woody Fernandez, Speedy Clax, and Devin George for the remainder of the season. Like I said, this team isn't great. We're probably quote unquote tanking at the moment, but that's fine. Let's get a top 10 pick. Let's continue to develop Steph and all the guys around him. Monte Ellis can still be our number one at the moment too i'm fine with we can also revisit trade ideas with him in the offseason if we wanted to possibly move him but i think i would like to at least experiment another year with ellis and curry in the backcourt so i'll see you guys at the end of the season don't think we're making the playoffs. So LeBron James in his final year in Cleveland, well, that was happening in real life, wins MVP. Gerald Henderson, shout out UNC, takes home rookie of the year in Charlotte. I guess that would be for the Bobcats. Manu Ginobili, one of the best six mans ever, gets six man of the year. Depoy goes to LeBron as well. Kevin Love, most improved in Minnesota. That's when it was like fat Kevin Love and this guy was just a beast on the boards. He never was that same player when he got traded to Cleveland, but he didn't need to be because he was behind Kyrie Irving and LeBron James in the scoring pecking order. And he was very important to their 2016 championship team. Darren Williams, this guy was so good in Utah. It was him or Chris Paul for the best point guard in the league. Once Steve Nash kind of started to fall off and Steph really didn't take that next step yet. He was just so much fun. Him and Carlos Boozer over there in Utah. You had Dwight just being the best center in the league by far at the time before he got Got traded to LA and then his career kind of started going downhill a little bit. You got Mello in Denver, Al Jefferson in Minnesota. He went over there from the Kevin Garnett trade. Al Horford and Josh Smith, the front court in Atlanta. And then they ended up getting Paul Millsap. They had plenty of bigs throughout the late 2000s, early 2010s. Duncan, Russ, and Chris Paul um, as well there. Do we get any Warriors? We do not on the all defensive teams, which is fine. So unfortunately, we do have the playing tournament here. I will be turning that off in the offseason. But we actually finished the season 38 and 42, which is way better than I expected. Now, we are the 10th seed in the playing tournament. I don't know what I want, though. I kind of hope that the Clippers also don't make the playoffs because we have their first round pick, but I also want our pick to be good value. So I guess it's a win-win, lose-lose, however you want to look at it for this round one matchup in the playing tournament. But yeah, let's hope that neither team kind of advances. So whoever wins this game loses the next. Let's see. Are we going to be advancing? No, we get eliminated. So that helps out our pick. If you had the OG playoffs, we would not have had to worry about this. We ended up losing 122-129. Steph, though... When the brights were or when the lights were bright, killed it. Monte Ellis only took 13 shots, but was a beast at the line. Anthony Randolph, 19, 11, and 6. Okay. He's still 20 years old. Batum had 15. Jordan had 11 and 6. Now let's hope that Phoenix with 94 overall, Steve Nash, Jay Rich, Grand Hill, Amari Stoudemire, Drogic, Channing Fry, Jared Dudley Barbosa can beat the Clippers. Please, oh my god, you guys suck. So our pick that could have been like 11 or 12 is now gonna be at least 15. Damn, or a back Clippers pick, I mean. So let's see. Are they going to lose to the Lakers in round one? They do. And then you have the Lakers with Pau Gasol being the Western Conference Finals MVP. And Rondo, who was your Eastern Conference Finals MVP, meet in the finals. So this finals was actually between the Celtics and the Lakers as well. The Lakers ended up winning this one in seven games too. One of the best finals ever. Kobe, though, gets finals MVP here. Grant Hill retires at 37 years old on the Suns. Some notable guys retiring, but nobody too crazy at the moment. Well, there's Popovich retiring. Okay. So we're going to go back to the old playoffs. This is a sick rule change. The draft order of all lottery teams will be decided by an elimination tournament. Remaining picks are determined by team record. That's kind of cool. 28 owners rejected it. Honestly, let's spice it up. Let's do it. I don't know if that's going to go into effect this offseason i kind of hope not but who knows maybe steph and monta ellis get me the number one pick so it doesn't look like it's going to affect now we're gonna get the 12th pick 
The Clippers would have been there also. I don't think we're going to move up. Yeah, so we have the 12th pick in this draft as well as the 16th selection. So we'll keep Don Nelson as our head coach. He did end up getting fired that offseason. Keith Smart ended up being the head coach who only coached for one year, then Mark Jackson for a few, and then ended up being Steve Kerr. So at pick 12, who's getting mocked to us? Derek Favors? That would be a nice addition. Now, I do want to see if like a Gordon Hayward falls to like a pick six because then I would move both my picks to move up. Charlotte ends up with John Wall with the number one pick. The Kings still end up with DeMarcus Cousins. Just happens at pick two, not at pick five. Pick three is going to be Ed Davis. Oh, New Jersey, what are you doing? Well, then they ended up becoming the Brooklyn Nets. The Pacers are trading pick four for Kevin Martin and a future first round pick there. Lottery protected in the 2011 draft and they take Gordon Hayward. All right, if Paul George doesn't get selected here, I'm trading up. Don't do it, Minnesota. You don't want Paul George. Okay, they take Paul George. So like Greg Monroe, I would be interested in trading up for because I wouldn't mind making him like a power forward. Let's see if the Pistons would do this. I don't think they will. 12 and 16 for pick six. They don't even give me a counter. I don't know if there's any player. I would give them Ronnie Turioff as well since I'm adding a big. So this will be my final offer. Two first and Ronnie Turioff to move up. And they agree to that. Let's go. So we are going to be selecting Greg Monroe with this selection did wish I ended up getting Paul George, but it is okay. Welcome to the team, Greg Monroe out of Georgetown. He may be our power forward next year if we want to keep DeAndre Jordan as the starting center. And with our second round pick, there's nobody that I'm familiar with. So we'll just take the top guy, which is a shame. So I'm not even going to sign this guy, honestly. Well, all right, whatever. So we're going to pick up the team options on Nick Batum and Anthony Randolph. Most of these guys from the 2008 and nine classes are getting re-signed on their team options. So here, moratorium phase, LeBron, who ended up going to Miami as a free agent. So is Dirk, Duncan, Nan. Brandon Roy, Rondo, a lot of guards kind of, and then some aging power forwards. Chris Bosch is a free agent. Gerald Wallace as well. Man, I would be interested in picking up Gerald Wallace because I know we got cap space. We do. David Lee ended up getting traded this offseason, but he's a free agent. Rudy Gay is here. All right, so I think we're fine with our center duo um, of Beadrance and DeAndre Jordan. Now, if I move Greg Monroe to a power forward, he actually... Not too bad there. And his backup position can be a center for sure. So we're good at center. Power forward, I don't hate it. Small forward though, I wouldn't mind adding a starter and have Nick Batum kind of come off the bench. We're good at shooting guard and maybe a backup point guard we can look to add. So small forwards, I mean, Richard Jefferson's 30. Do I want to add a vet? Maybe. Because Gerald Wallace will cost a lot and so will Rudy Gay. So I will add Richard Jefferson. Two-year deal. Team option on the next year. Damn, well, they got Kyle Lowry's age wrong because he's 37 in this. I'm going to give Gennaro Pargo a one-year deal minimum offer to be possibly our backup point guard. So that's all we're going to do. I want to see if Steph and Monta Ellis can take a step for this team. Richard Jefferson could possibly be moved at the deadline if that were to happen. As LeBron goes back to Cleveland, Dirk goes to Portland. Duncan goes north of the border to Canada. He's on the Raptors. Steve Nash to the Pacers. Brandon Roy Celtics. Rondo to the rival Lakers. Paul Pierce to the Clippers just a few years earlier than that ended up happening. Bosch to Denver. Wallace stays in the Southeast Division. He goes to Atlanta. David Lee goes to Houston. Ray Allen to Philly. Well, Marcus Aldridge goes to Dallas. That's a huge pickup. All right, so let's take a look here at player progression. Ellis is up to an 86. Curry's up to an 82. Batum's an 82 as well. Let's go. All right, so let's look at our 2011 team. Where it's going to be Steph Curry, Monte Ellis, Nick Batum. I think I'm going to have Greg Monroe start at the four. Richard Jefferson, I think may also start, but we'll have Batum play a little bit more off the bench. Randolph can also get some decent amount of minutes off the bench as well. I do want to see at least Greg Monroe play 24 minutes a night. We'll stick with the nine-man rotation. Three and a half star balance. First game of the season's at home against the Spurs. They don't have Duncan anymore. It does not matter. Curry gives me 25, nine, and three. Greg Monroe, 21 and 11 in his first game as a warrior in the NBA. DeAndre Jordan, 19 boards and three blocks. Three rebounds for Anthony Randolph. Okay. When does our first win happen? Well, it's not in the first two games of the year. But we do beat the Lakers, a team that just won it all in our third game. Kobe and Pau Gasol went off. But Curry, this may be his breakout season, man. 45 points. Mania Ellis has 23 and 10. Also three steals as well. Any pending free agents we should keep an eye on? DeAndre Jordan, okay. I would like to get an extension done. We'll see how much he's going to be demanding. Only $10 million. I would be a fan of that. So I'll see you guys probably mid-season update and see what this team is looking like. 
All right, Anthony Randolph is coming off the bench, and I think Greg Monroe is going to be the power forward for at least the time being. So I'm getting offered from the Phoenix Suns two future first round picks for Anthony Randolph. So these are in the 2013 and 2014 drafts. We're going to do this deal. That means like Gennaro Pargo will get some minutes now, but yeah, I don't think it's going to change our team too much. We're 18 and 10 right now, so we're doing pretty good. We could end up being a buyer at the deadline, but I wanted to get two first, like I got offered two first round picks for Anthony Randolph, I had to accept it. Bridget Jefferson's actually been good for us. I did get offered Michael Pietris and a first round pick for him. I think I'm going to decline it and keep him for the time being. We are 21 games above 500. Let's see what we could do in the playoffs with this team. All right, so we are 38 and 17 at the All-Star Draft. LeBron and Kobe are the All-Star captains. Do we get any All-Stars? Wait, what? No Steph Curry, no Monta Ellis? Damn, that's kind of unfortunate. Andre Iguodala, potential future warrior there though. I don't know how we didn't get any all-stars. Curry's averaging 23 and seven and a half assists. He's shooting 43% from downtown, 78% from the line. I don't know if I agree with that in the 2012 season. He shot 80% in real life or 2011 season where he shot 93%. Mona Ellis has been very good for us though. 53% from the field. He's averaging seven assists. Also, Nick Batum has been great for us. There's Richard Jefferson. Greg Monroe's efficiency hasn't been the worst as a rookie. I mean, it's not been good, but it could be much worse. So I will take that. Rudy Fernandez is shooting 39% from three. So I don't know if I'm going to be a buyer at the deadline, but I think we're just going to roll with our team. I don't want to give up any future picks or trade any young players. So yeah, let's see if this team can do something in the playoffs because it's looking like we are definitely making it. And LeBron James goes back to back winning MVPs. John Wall on the Charlotte Bobcats Hornets gets rookie of the year. He's already incredible so far as a rookie. Emeka Okafor, sixth man of the year for the New Orleans Pelicans at the time, the New Orleans Hornets. LeBron gets deep in back to back years. Henry Walker, most improved. Shout out to him. George Carl of the Denver Nuggets gets coach of the year. Home Bay first team is Wade, Darren Williams, LeBron James, KD, Dwight Howard. You have Chris Paul, Kobe Bryant, Carmelo Anthony, Tim Duncan, and Demarcus Cousins on all NBA second team. Third team, you got John Wall, Rodney Stuckey, Pau Gasol, Josh Smith, and Alec Jefferson. We don't see any Warriors though. Steph, man, he had such a good season. He should be here. But shout out to DeAndre Jordan on all defensive second team. 2.2 blocks. We're definitely going to look to bring him back. And then we also got Greg Monroe on all rookie second team. So we made the playoffs as the fifth seed. There is no playing tournament this season. We do have the Lakers first round pick and yeah, they were pretty good. But yeah, here were the end of the season stats. Curry at 22.8 points, 7.9 assists. Monta Ellis, 19.7 points, 6.7 assists. There's Nick Batum, Richard Jefferson, Rudy Fernandez, Greg Monroe, all scoring 10 plus a night. So we're going up against the Utah Jazz in round one. They have maybe the best point guard in the league right now in Darren Williams. He was 50, 40, 90 this season. Tracy McGrady, who is 31 years old. They got CJ Miles, Carlos Boozer, and Memento oh, Core. Remember him? He was underrated as well. Do they still have AK 47? They do. And Andre Kirilenko. They got Jordan Farmer, Quinton Richardson. All right, let's see what Steph Curry and Monte Ellis can do. Game one, we do end up winning by eight points. But Toom was the leading scorer, actually. And then Rudy Fernandez, number two. Monte Ellis did not play well. Greg Monroe had a double double. Steph only took 12 shots. All right, let's see if we can win game two. We end up losing this one. Oh boy, by 54 points. Yikes, we got blown out. Game number three, we end up losing to the Jazz by 13 points. Mina Ellis with 24, 4, and 5. Six turnovers. Steph had 11 assists. Greg Monroe, double-double. Richard Jefferson had 10 points. 13 rebounds for DeAndre Jordan. Did he have seven? Oh, I was going to say seven turnovers. That was offensive rebounds, which is pretty sick. Did we go down three to one? We stay alive. We end up winning by two points at home. Steph, man, hasn't been that good for us in the playoffs. I mean, he's been solid, 40% from three. 18 and 7, but I thought this might be like his breakout series. We go down three games to two. Darren Williams, 30 and 14. Good ward. DeAndre Jordan dominated this game. Yeah, I'm really like curious what's going on with Steph. Game number six. We stay alive. We end up winning by 10. Curry with just seven points over eight from three. He's been pretty ass in this playoff series. So here we go. Game seven, Utah, Golden State in salt lake city let's see if we could beat the jazz and move on to round two which would be pretty incredible if we could do so but we end up having an abysmal second half and like a horrible fourth quarter we lose by 31 points curry man do i trade curry this offseason steph was really bad mana ellis was fantastic in those seven games. But you know what? This was a successful season nonetheless. Andre Ugadella and the Philadelphia 76ers are in the finals going up against Baron Davis and the Clippers. Okay, 
and the Sixers win in six with Iggy being your finals MVP. Oh yeah, so road to the number one pick. This is kind of sick. Let's see. Oh wait, we don't have anything here, right? So you have 12 teams or excuse me, 13 teams in each conference. The one and two seeds get a buy. Okay, yeah, no, no, excuse me. You have seven teams in each conference. So since, I don't know if you have another team's pick, you would be in here. So unfortunately, we aren't gonna be in here. So this is kind of cool though. I like, this would be sick if the NBA adopted this, but why would these teams care to play for the pick? So yeah, this would never happen. And the Pistons end up getting the number one pick in the draft, which is wild. Shaq retires on the Pelicans. Michael Finley, Derek Fisher, Marcus Camby, Stephon Marbury, Big Z all retire as well. Shaq heads to the Hall of Fame. You surprised. All right, so let's just kind of reject these. I'm thinking about like doing some crazy uh, role changes. We'll go back to these rookie sophomores. I mean, that's what it was at the time. Phil Jackson's head coach, Mike D'Antoni, Steve Kerr. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get Steve Kerr as my assistant, but I would throw the bag at him. Steve Nash while he's still playing. So wow, Steve Kerr accepts my deal. So if we don't do well with Donnie Nelson next year, he's gonna be the head coach. All right, so we're here. 2011 NBA draft, Jimmy Butler is the projected number one pick to Detroit. Our first first round pick isn't till 23. Nikola Mirotic is the protected or the projected pick. Wait, do we only have one first round pick in this class? Yeah, we do. Oh, so we don't have the Lakers first till next year. All right, so let's see who's available for us at 23. Kawhi actually goes number one to Detroit. Bojan Bogdanovic over Clay, Jimmy, Kyrie at number two. Markeith Morris goes three. What is going on? Kyrie goes four to Boston. Five is Jimmy Butler. There you go. Six is Klay Thompson to the Kings. That's pretty cool. Seven is Marcus Morris. Eight is Isaiah Thomas, who was originally the 16th overall pick. There's Jonas Valanciunas, Nikola Vucevic, Kenneth Fareed. Kemba Walker is still on the board. And there he goes. He just went to the Miami Heat in like pick 15 or 16. First trade is the 18th overall pick for a 40-year-old Jason Kidd. We're on the clock at 23. We can get Reggie Jackson, Derek Williams, who was the second overall pick on draft night. I think I'm going to take Davis Bertans. 19 years old. Could be a good sharpshooter. Probably will be in the G League next year. Kyrie Irving's an 81 overall. Celtics got a steal there with the fourth pick. So we are just going to sign Bertans there. Team player options, Curry. We're going to pick that up. Batum, Richard Jefferson, 10.8 mil. I'm actually going to pick that up. So we could always trade him if I needed to cut costs, but I don't think we will. All right. So Kevin Durant is a free agent here. So is Carmelo Anthony. Whoa. Um... That would be kind of sweet, not gonna lie. Amari Stoudemire is also here. He does want a boatload of money. Does he have a real offer from the Suns? The Pacers gave him a real offer. I wouldn't mind going after Amari Stoudemire. Let's look to bring back DeAndre Jordan. Three years, around $30 million. I mean, if I could sign Kevin Durant, I'd love that. The Thunder did give him a deal. He may sign with Denver. All right, so let's see if we can get Prime Mello to Golden State. Let's try it. All right, I may have offered two eventual Knicks at the time. Carmelo Anthony and Amari Stoudemire contracts. Now they both signed with me. So I don't know if I would be able to get this deal done at the moment. So I think I would have to clear up. I don't know why it's saying that much money in cap space. Cause like say I don't sign DeAndre Jordan at the moment. I should only have to clear up like $3 million to get this deal done. Let's just make sure DeAndre Jordan does not sign. We could still sign Carmelo. I think I just have to clear up like $2 million, which means this is where Richard Jefferson would end up getting traded. And we're going to ship Richard Jefferson as well as a second round pick to San Antonio for Dewan Blair. Not bad backup, big depth. And then we get a future first round pick from Portland in a few years. Thank you, Richard Jefferson, for your services. We can sign Carmelo Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony and... DeAndre Jordan does not get signed anywhere. So let's give him that original offer and boom, let's do that. Let's freaking go. What a free agency class. Now there may not be enough rock for everyone. So possibly Monte Ellis gets traded at the deadline for more of a defensive minded two guard, but this team is going to be fun. Curry, Ellis, Rudy Fernandez, Anthony Batum, Stoudemire, Blair Monroe, Jordan Biedrins. We also have Bertans as well. Let's bring in Mike Bibby on a one-year deal if I do want to play a backup point guard eventually huge. Monte Ellis does regress a little bit, but this team could win a championship next year in 2012. So yeah, we're going to have Curry, Ellis, <laughs> Mello, Amari Stoudemire, Jordan Batum, Blair Monroe, Fernandez. I love this team. Under Don Nelson, we are four and a half star balance. Come on, let's go one and out. Oh my God. We lose by 28 to the Lakers. Of course we do. And then we end up beating the Suns by 12. This is going to be a fun year, 100%. All right. So we got team LeBron, team Kevin Durant for the all-star draft. No more Kobe Bryant there and Kevin Durant is now a captain. We do get Steph Curry for the first 
first time, this would be of his career being an all-star, 23.7 points. So we added Melo and Damari and his points did not go down. His assist went up to 10.4. He may be the best point guard in the league. 48% from three. This dude is absolutely insane. Carmelo Anthony is also an all-star. Uh, he is averaging 21, seven and seven and a half assists for Melo. That's crazy. 48% from three. Unfortunately, no Stoudemire or Monte Ellis here as Stoudemire is averaging 16 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds. I'm debating if I want to keep Monte Ellis around. We are 47 and nine though, so maybe I should. 48 and 10. This team is just elite. I think I'm going to roll with this team into the playoffs. I don't think like Dewan Blair, I don't love though. So like if I were to not play Dewan Blair for the rest of the year, we can give Rudy Fernandez and we can give, I guess, Andres Biedrins like 10 minutes a night. And then we could probably do about 18 of Rudy Fernandez, which is good with me. Screw it. Let's see if this team can win a championship. I feel like it could. Anybody down to re-sign Rudy Fernandez, I would give you a two-year deal for sure. Yeah, let's see if this team can win it all here in 2012. So LeBron James wins three MVPs in a row in this video. Isaiah Thomas wins rookie of the year for the Dallas Mavericks. James Harden gets six men of the year. Still six men in OKC OK. Dwight Howard gets Depoy. Lance Stevenson most improved in Memphis and we get coach of the year. We go 69 and 13. I mean, we had an elite free agency last year. KD, I was hoping he went to the East. He is on all NBA first team on the Nuggets. Yo, KD's not there. Why is Harden coming off the bench? I do not know. Here's all NBA second team and we do get Melo and Curry who, oh my God, he averaged 24 and 10. 51-47 splits. That's insane. And then there's Melo, who averaged 27-7 and seven on all NBA third team. That's what I'm talking about. No DeAndre Jordan on all defensive team, which is fine. I mean, the all rookie teams are stacked. We are the one seed, though, in the Western Conference, taking on the Dallas Mavericks in round one. We just saw that Isaiah Thomas won rookie of the year. They signed with Marcus Aldridge. I don't know if he's from Texas, but he went to school in Texas. So kind of brought him home in that point. And he's from Dallas, Texas. All right. So that was pretty cool, probably, when he ended up signing with San Antonio. I wonder if he did want to go to the Mavericks at the time. Nicholas Batum, Mavericks more points than Amari Stoudemire. I did not expect that this season. So for the playoffs, I want to play nine guys. Dewan Blair is not going to play. I think we're going to give Andres Biedrins like 10 minutes a night since we kind of have Greg Monroe as the backup big. Rudy Fernandez can get 15. Uh, Greg Monroe, probably 18 minutes is cool with me. Batum, who's good, will get 28. We'll do 30 to DeAndre Jordan. And then let's do 33 to Ellis, 36 to Curry and Melo, 34 to Amari Stoudemire. That's good with me. What if we're five-star bounce? Ah, oh, that would have been sick. All right, so game one against Dallas, we end up beating them by eight points. Curry, yes, this is where I need the breakout playoff series to come. I mean, you were an All-NBA third team guy and an All-Star, so it would have been more fitting if you broke out last year, but he really disappointed us. We're up two games to zero. Make that three games. Let's go. 19 assists for Curry, five steals for Melo in game three, and we sweep Dallas. Let's freaking go. We win by 12 points. Mine and Ellis... With a 30 piece, Amari with 29 and 12. Greg Monroe had 22 and 9. Playoff stats were kind of off the charts in round one. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here we are. We're going to be taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. They do have a good team. They have Ricky Rubio, Paul George, Thad Young, Kevin Love, and Albert Jefferson. I mean, that's a mean front court. Kevin Love's a beast. Thad Young. He's solid. He did not play all that well in round one. Paul George is very good already. Their bench isn't anything crazy. Johnny Flinch out Syracuse. We beat them. So we are currently undefeated in the playoffs. We're 5-0. and Make that 6-0. and Let's go. I feel like we're on a collision course with the Lakers, but we'll see. We do lose our first game there, and so did the Lakers there. I mean, the Lakers gentlemen swept the Jazz in round one. Ah, Curry 27-7. and Amari 25-10. and Don't let them tie it up, please. Oh, boy. All right, I got way too cocky. All right, so somehow we're tied two to two. Let's see what happens. The Lakers are down three to two. I know Denver does have Kevin Durant though, so I can't be too shocked. We need to win game five. Great first three quarters, but they are only within 11. So they could come back here in the fourth. They go on a run. We're only up by 10, up by 12, and we end up winning by 14. Nick Batum. Nicholas Batum, 38 points, 17 assists for Curry. Johnny Flynn, I talk shit on him and he drops 23. And the Lakers did force a game seven. Don't let them force a game seven. Ugh, they have a great first half against us. Oh man, we're getting blown out. Oh boy. Oh, we just got blown out by 36 points. Here we go, game seven. The Lakers did advance. We're at home in Golden State. Are we still on that collision course? What the heck? The Timberwolves are destroying us. Not really. <laughs> Not really. But they just came out like on fire in the first quarter. We have a great second half start to it. 
Good third quarter. Hold on. We're up by 18 with four and a half minutes. Let's go. We end up winning by 13 points. Mello with almost a 31 point triple double. He goes nuclear and we are here against the Lakers in the conference finals. All right. You do have LeBron versus Dwight there in the Eastern conference finals. We were still on that collision course with the Lakers, but much challenging. We both had to win in seven games going up against Rondo, Kobe, Pau Gasol, Bynum, Odom, Chalmers, Ron Artest at the time, Drew Gooden, Kona Azabuki Revenge Series. That's a sick Lakers team. All right, so let's see what happens. Game one, we win. Okay. Whoa. We beat them by 43 points. Game two goes to the Warriors. All right, we beat them by three. Ellis with 35, Batum 24 and 11. Game three. Oh my God. The Timberwolves are going to put up a bigger fight. Kobe is 48, but they still lose by three. We had four guys scored 20 or more. And we end up sweeping the Lakers. Curry averages 21 and 13. 0.5 rebounds. But hey, we won. And the... What? The Magic swept the Cavs. So you got the Warriors versus the Magic. Oh, man. The Magic were built perfectly around Dwight Howard. Stan Van Gundy did a phenomenal job just having shooters around the best center in the league with Turkaloo, Ryan Anderson, Rashad Lewis, Jameer Nelson, like J.J. Redick at times. Like, it was sick. We do win game one. No! By 40. By 50, actually. We held them to nine points in the third. Game two goes to the Golden State Warriors. Oh, yeah, by 12 points. All right, guys, we're two games away. One game away. How did the Timberwolves almost beat us? Because we may possibly sweep the conference finals and NBA finals. Now, the Magic get off to a good start. So let's come back. I would love to sweep them. Get a close one here in the fourth. Now we end up getting blown out by 26. All right, let's not blow a 3-0 lead. All right, here we go. Game number five. Gentlemen sweep, possibly. It is a close one here. It is a close one. Up by eight with six and a half to go. And we just choked. Oh, no. Down by six. Down by five with two minutes left. Are we going to come back? No. Oh, my God. We lost by 10. Three games to two. And we're going back to Orlando for game six. Oh, no. This is scary. Oh, my goodness. They have an insane second quarter. It's a close one. Down by five. Two and a half to go. Okay. Down by two. I kind of want to hop in. Down by three, a minute 18 left. All right, so we do have Melo in. He's got 23, 8, and 6. Vince Carter with the ball. They got Martian Gortat in there. Amari's in. Carter's driving. DeAndre Jordan's right there. Dwight's got no mid-range. Ellis almost gets the steal, and he does. Or Melo gets it. Let's go. Kick it up to Amari. Oh, I don't really trust Amari right now. Um, Why is Nick Batum out here and not Steph? Oh, Batum got his man in the air, but just terrible floor spacing. Melo, please hit this. Please hit this, Melo. Oh, he missed it. No. Oh, is that Xavier Henry for three? He misses that, thank God. Okay, um, we definitely need a two for one. Ellis, can you get to the rim, please? Jameer Nelson guarding him. Ellis, yep. Oh my God, he gets blocked. No, by Dwight. Kind of have to bait them. Carter needs to miss that. He does, he does. Okay, Jordan with the rebound. All right, this, this is crazy. Oh boy, this is gonna be tough. All right, so Curry's got 22 and 12, just allergic to getting rebounds. I could go for the two for one, um, they're doubling, they're doubling, they're doubling. Kick it out to Mel. No, oh, he got Dwight in the air. Oh, and he gets stripped. No, no, he gets stripped by Dwight. We don't have any timeouts. Luckily, Dwight isn't the best free throw shooter in the world. And we have the best three point shooter of all time on our team. Dwight, please miss both. Okay, he misses both. Let's go. Kick it up to Curry. Um, can we do a floppy set for Curry? Let's go. Kick it to Monte Ellis. Curry, I need you to get off these screens. I, I mean, Curry may get double teamed, which means we can get an open three for Melo or Ellis here. Curry gets off the screen. Are they going to... They are double teaming. Kick it to Monte Ellis for three to force overtime. He misses it. Oh my God, he's wide open. Are you kidding me? I did that perfectly. They sent the double. Wait, he left Ellis wide open. Here we go. Game seven of the 2012 finals. Don't get blown out. I would cry. Oh my God. Are the Magic really that much better than us? All right. Down by... What is going on? We were up three games to zero. All right. Down by one. We need to have a good fourth quarter, please. All right. Tie game. Tie game. Up by one. Up by three. Up by six. Please hold on. Please hold on. Please... Oh my god. All right, we're hopping in. 11 seconds left. It's a tie game. Please tell me we have the ball. Oh my god, we don't have the ball. You gotta be kidding me. If I lose this on a game winner, I will cry. Oh my god. Okay, don't foul. Don't foul. Batum. No, no, no. Get back on Carter. Good thing he's old and kind of slow at this point. All right, just hold down. Um, I'm gonna help. Okay, 
I mean, let Carter take that. Get it. Timeout, 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 timeout. Oh my god, no. I didn't have any timeouts. No. Don't tell me that's how I lose the finals. Don't tell me. Oh my god, they get a technical. You're kidding me. Please miss this. Please miss this. Harrison. Oh my god, they have the ball. They have the ball. What? No, I can't believe this. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to bait them. Oh no, and he's wide open. Oh my god. Oh my god. That just happened. That really just happened. We just blew a 3 0 lead on an excessive timeout technical foul. I don't think I recovered from this one. This may be the biggest choke job in NBA history. I'm at a loss for words.